Hey everybody, Brian Newber here again from goldenblack.com. What is today's date? It is Friday, May 15th. Um, we started this little goldenblack.com daily quarantine simulcast endeavor uh, weeks and weeks ago, roughly eight weeks ago now, and I, I told you I would be here every day. Some of you, as I said then, viewed that as a promise. Some of you viewed it as a threat. Nonetheless, here I am once again on Friday with your goldenblack.com daily quarantine simulcast and a cat. Um, it's brought to you by Fox Purdue Bookstores, Purdue Federal Credit Union, the Sixth Street Dive Restaurant, First Source Bank, East End Grill, and the Charters Team Remax Ability Plus. If you're listening on the radio, you probably did not see a cat, but I promise you there's a cat. Um, want to remind you once again, important matters here. Stop it. Um, If you're looking for a great dinner or to support our local businesses, <laughs> please keep in mind uh, East End Grill, Sixth Street Dive Restaurant, um, Arnie's, Bruno's, and the Whitaker Inn. Uh, all would love to hear from you. All remain open for care orders. Should I just go with it here or what? Um, all right. Um, we have a lot of topics uh, here. Uh, we've talked about a lot of topics here. I'm sorry, I'm a little bit distracted by the cat. I thought this would be cute. It's not going very well. Uh, we've gotten through a lot of topics here. We've had to get creative at times to come up with topics. Uh, now is not one of those times because this was a very eventful week, as you guys are aware, uh, in terms of uh, you know basketball news, perhaps you heard, uh, but also a lot of stuff going on on the recruiting front. Um, perhaps you saw my video interview earlier with Dion Burks, the new Purdue football commitment, big deal. Uh, but also there was some other big news uh, on the recruiting front this week. Uh, maybe not altogether un uh, unexpected, but pretty impactful nonetheless. That coming in the form of the NCAA <laughs> ext <laughs> extending um, the COVID-19 dead period through the end of June. Um, this was probably something you could have predicted uh, because no one knows what the hell is going on with COVID-19 right now in terms of when things are going to re resume toward normalcy. But this is a big deal uh, because June is a big deal. Uh, in football recruiting, uh, as you know, all right, fine. <sighs> all right. Hard reset here. Um, no more cat distractions, cat distractions. Um, June in football recruiting is the new December. It is the new January. It is the new hotbed for official visits. It is when early commitments happen. Once the NCAA went to an early signing period, once the NCAA went to an early signing period, uh, June became a really big deal. It became the summer official visit hotbed, as I just said, uh, when a lot of early commitments happened. And if those visits cannot happen this year, it still remains to be seen whether they can be pushed back to July or August. But if they can't be, here's what's going on. You got a lot of kids already who are making early commitments, A, because they're bored, uh, B, because they probably have a lot more time to think about it, C, because while visits and all that goes into recruiting has stopped for the time being, um, the urgency to commit early has not. Kids obviously are thinking about recruiting earlier and earlier uh, in football nowadays, uh, but also the urgency that comes with needing to reserve your spot, worrying about your spot filling up at the school you want to go to, that remains the same. So as much as one really important area of the process in terms of the visits has ceased, the dynamics at play that often compel kids to commit early has not ceased. And that is... Uh, lends itself to likely a lot more kids trying to uh, or giving them much more reason to want to commit early. So I wouldn't be surprised here if in the next couple of weeks you see even more guys than normal. And I want to remind you, Purdue has eight commitments already before June 1st. Specifically for Purdue, that's an unprecedented amount of early, early commitments. It could get to the point where more and more of these guys are deciding now because of the uncertainty that goes into the official visits. You have a lot of guys here who've been saying, 
you know, I'd really like to take my official visits before I commit. Perfectly reasonable. Every kid should take their official visits before they commit, whether they're going to have that opportunity or not. I don't know. They're probably realizing that right now. And it wouldn't surprise me at all if you see a bunch of kids now that June is off the table, just say to hell with it and commit. Uh, you've seen that already to a certain extent. You might see it even more. As far as Purdue is concerned, you have some guys here in Indiana specifically who, you know, I think Purdue is probably in pretty good shape with, but they've said they'd like to take their visits before uh, they make any kind of decisions. Yanni Karloftis at West Lafayette High School being one, Donovan McCulley at Lawrence North, the quarterback being another one. Uh, you do sort of wonder how this kind of thing impacts them uh, in terms of them actually being able to take those visits before they make that decision. Um, could help Purdue. Really, really could help Purdue. Purdue's had a lot of the kids it's recruiting on campus already. Uh, could really help them, um, but it could go a lot of different ways too. Uh, this is also denying Purdue an opportunity to get some kids on campus. It would have otherwise, and that, thus it would have really expanded things uh, this summer. Um, but who knows how it's going to turn out, but it wouldn't surprise me if you see more and more early decisions from here on out. The other part of this is camps. There are not going to be any camps in June. Uh, I'd be astonished if there's any sort of camps in July or August. I just don't see us getting to that point um, anytime soon. Um, camps are a big deal, uh, not only because it gives kids a chance to go to various campuses and work out for the offers they might want to get discovered, whatever it might be, to supersize their recruiting. Uh, so to speak, kids will not get that chance. As I said yesterday, and I don't mean this as any disrespect to Purdue, Indiana, and Illinois, but now that kid who has the Purdue, Indiana, Illinois, uh, holy trinity there of early offers, uh, isn't going to have a chance to go camp at Ohio State and try to get, you know, one of those really, really high-end, one of those offers that's perceived as a really high-end sort of offer. Obviously, every kid is different. Every offer uh, holds different value for every kid, uh, but you aren't going to see the big ones. Um, I always say the big ones eat the little ones in college sports. Um, the big ones in that sense aren't going to have a chance to get these kids on their campus for camps. Those kids aren't going to have a chance to change the complexion of their recruiting uh, by going to an Ohio State, Michigan, Penn State and getting that sort of offer that typically often jumps right to the top of the pile uh, when it comes in. That being said, the other significance of camp season is sometimes kids go to camps and they don't get offers they want. And they realize, hey, you know what? Now I know who really wants me. And now I need to start thinking real hard about those people who offered me back in March as opposed to the people who still haven't offered me in June. That creates a certain sort of uh, reality check for these guys that gets them moving into decision-making mode uh, oftentimes. And without camp season, that might have to happen organically. And without a kid actually going to a campus going to a camp and not getting offered. Uh, so I think this can really benefit a lot of the schools that were on these kids from day one who saw what they needed to see on film or during the spring evaluation period or whenever it was last year. Uh, guys who made early calls on who they want um, and stuck to it. Uh, it can really help them. Uh, there's not going to be a whole lot of midsummer poaching uh, going on here by the by the bigger brands uh, in college football. I do think this whole offseason is basically, I can't really use the word that comes to mind because it's an expletive and decorum precludes me from using it here. Uh, the whole process is that. Um, you're going to see kids making hastier decisions, less informed decisions. You're going to see uh, colleges making decisions based off much less thorough evaluations than they would otherwise. And that's going to lead to more misses. That's going to lead to potentially more decommitments late in the process. That's going to lead to a lot of things that aren't ideal, uh, potentially. But uh, everybody in this just sort of has to make the best of it. I think the loss of June, uh, again, is a really significant um, happening regarding the process. Uh, and we will see what comes from it. I wouldn't be surprised at all, again, if you see a rush of commitments here now. Um, throughout the rest of, what month is it? May. And then throughout June now, because the typical June events aren't happening. And I I don't see a lot of dudes sitting back and saying, hey, you know what? It's okay. I can wait till August or September 
because you don't know if the scholarship you think you might want is still going to be there uh, come that point in time. Obviously, nobody even knows it's going to be a season. So us talking about the recruiting process here is like blue on black. It's like it doesn't matter if the biggest uh, thing overshadows it. But um, recruiting is going to go on regardless of whether or not there's a season. When these visits are going to happen, who knows when these commitments are going to happen. It could start really, really happening because because – these guys are not going to get the benefit of a traditional process. That puts them in a really tough spot. It tough to, puts the colleges in a really tough spot, and it's just an unfortunate um, situation for everybody. But, you know, in the hierarchy of unfortunate situations that have come uh, during this strange, strange time in our collective history, I think college football recruiting is probably somewhere on around number 25,000 on the list. Um, but it is our realm of of coverage here. So it is certainly important to what we do. So I wanted to uh, talk about the impact of June's cancellation on the process the best I could. I hope you found this interesting. I hope you found this compelling. I hope you enjoyed my cat. Um, we will be back on Monday, whatever the hell Monday's date is. I don't know. Uh, this has been your goldenblack.com daily quarantine simulcast for Friday, uh, May 15th. It's been brought to you by Fox Purdue Bookstores, Purdue Federal Credit Union, the Sixth Street Dive Restaurant, First Source Bank, East End Grill, and the Charters Team Remax Ability Plus. I want to remind you once again, if you're looking for a hell of a dinner or simply to support our local businesses, please keep in mind the uh, East End Grill in downtown Lafayette, the Sixth Street Dive around downtown Lafayette, Arnie's in Lafayette, West Lafayette, and all over the state, Bruno's on the levee, and uh, the Whitaker Inn in West Lafayette, all will provide you with outstanding food. All would love to hear from you, and we would greatly appreciate it if you would support them. Keep them in mind. Thanks, everybody.